Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're here for the first time, hi, my name is Busari Imolayo and I'm a registered nurse based in Nigeria. On this channel, I film about nursing and healthcare and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to defend your research projects as a nursing student. So first, I'm going to give you a highlight of things that you need to know well, properly understand before even going for the defense or the examination that about the research project or the research paper. Some call it research project, some call it research paper, depending on what is being called in your school. So first and foremost, you need to understand your abstracts. Now your abstracts, I'm just going to put a picture up here so that you guys would see. The abstract is actually going to contain the summary of the entire project or the entire research paper. It's going to be it's going to contain your introduction statement of problem, methodology, results, um, conclusion and recommendations as well as the keywords in your research project. Now, why is it important for you to actually, if not understand, but at least memorize this, <laughs> if not understand, at least memorize this part is because it answers majority of the questions you're going to be getting in your exam or so in the exam or in the defense. So if your um, examiner just goes, tell me about your project. What you come to your mind is your abstract because it already contains the summary. So you're going to be saying stuff like this research project was conducted to this research project was on now the first thing you have still after that is your topic. Please know your topic. It would be very funny if you enter the exam hall and you don't even know what your topic is or you cannot state your topic correctly. Please don't panic. Know your topic, know the statement correctly and don't make mistakes when saying that. So once you've uh, more or less told your examiner the topic, then you want to go ahead and say this was inspired by and after the inspired by what you should have is your statement of problem. Not the entire section, but at least the summary of why you are carrying out the research. After you've stated the problem, then I continued the research to do the following. The next thing you want to mention is your objective. One, so you just list out your objective. So after doing it, you want to say, okay, I did this. Um, um, you're going to talking about the methodology, which would feature the setting, which is where you conducted research. Just mentioned the name of that place. The students, uh, the target population, you mentioned them. Then you talk about how you were able to get their views or data from the respondents, which is actually your research instrument. You're going to be saying if you used your questionnaire or if you did an interview or whatever it is you did, during the um, data collecting process then you move straight to your results after the result i found out this 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 and this you're just going to list that out then after the results you give your recommendations it's as simple as that when an examiner says tell me about your research work. so that is the first and most important thing you need to understand or know about your project your topic and your abstract now another thing you want to take very good note of or another thing you want to do before going for the um defense process if um your research is on med surgery or whatever the um I don't really, the topic that your research is actually centered around is this centered around or centered on yeah i think that's the right word centered upon you should have a good knowledge or a good grasp of that topic. Take for example, you did your project related to maybe malaria in pregnancy or your project, if your project is on malaria in pregnancy, please ignore the sound coming from the background or your project is on hypertension or your project is on diabetes, or your project is on cesarean section. You need to have a good understanding of that topic itself. So you should be able to say anything about diabetes, you should be able to say anything about hypertension, malaria in pregnancy, cesarean section, whatever your topic is centered on because your examiner is going to be expecting you to know a lot about the topic that you have conducted a research on so the examiner can go ahead and ask you a few questions about that topic for example if you were doing a research on malaria and pregnancy the examiner can decide to ask you the name of the drug given to pregnant women to prevent or the different uh, measures that are taken to prevent malaria in pregnancy so i meant malaria in pregnancy not pregnancy to prevent malaria in pregnancy, the examiner can decide to ask you about the life cycle of the malaria parasite. May decide to ask you the different um, plasmodium species that exist, or tell you to mention a few plasmodium species and things like that. So, if you're going for a research um, defense, you should at least have a good understanding of the topic that your research paper is centered on. I hope you are getting that. So, next thing you want to make sure is that 
you understand your methodology which is the chapter three in fact the entire thing in chapter three is something you need to understand because this is where you did um this explains how you did or you conducted your research you know majority of the things you have in chapter two or chapter and chapter and part of chapter one are things that are most likely things that have been said by other researchers about that same topic possibly you've been referencing citing and doing so many things in chapter one and chapter two but chapter three refers to what you did as a researcher on your own so it is very so it is very important that you have a good understanding of what is in your chapter three now still on chapter three what are the likely things that the examiner could ask you about your chapter three the first thing you need to understand is your research design is it descriptive is it experimental which design uh, which research design did you adopt for your study the examiner may not ask you to explain what that design is but you should at least know the design that you use i know majority of us had our brothers sisters or senior colleagues or friends and family members um assist us to put the research paper together being most times because it will be the first research paper you'll be writing so it is um possible for you not to really understand what you have in your research paper and if you want to get more explanation on that you can easily contact golden pen by um sending a message to whatsapp number on your screen and let us know where you have issues understanding your research project now next thing you want to talk or you want to understand in your methodology is your research instrument yes did you use a questionnaire did you use um interview format you need to have a good grasp of what type of research instrument you use then you might also want to talk about how you were able to select your um respondents the sampling technique that is what it is called you should be able to understand if you use simple random sampling technique or use snowballing or use multi-state sampling technique you should be able to say what exact technique you um adopted in selecting your respondents and there's some and you should have a good grasp of um what's the uh, chapter three but what i've said earlier are things that um the examiner is likely to ask you about now moving to chapter four and five what you need to um understand basically you have a good grasp of when it comes to chapter four and five is one the summary of your results which will take you back to your abstract that i mentioned earlier because the abstract will obviously contain the summary of the results so if the examiner asks you fine after you can look at the study what um did you find out what did you uh, arrive at the examiner is just asking for the summary of your results and you should be able to give that flawlessly if there's anyone like that like you should be able to say that just like that you should be able to say all uh, all the things you arrived at at the end of the study now in chapter five what you should be able to um say or what you should have a good understanding of your chapter five and one implications to nursing practice now this is something that the examiner may choose to ask you because this is how the entirety of the research paper whether it be 96 pages 100 pages 50 pages or no matter how voluminous the old um, research paper is this is where it applies to nursing practice so you should understand your implications to nursing practice nursing education nursing research properly because you may be asked then another thing is your recommendation because your recommendations are your own words as a researcher so you should be able to state the recommendations you would give or you have given at the end of the study so i hope with this video um it says i've helped you tell out your reading or your studying of your research project towards your forthcoming defense if you enjoyed this video kindly give it a thumbs up Subscribe below to become a YouTube family member. Send a message to Golden Pen on the WhatsApp number on your screen so you can join our WhatsApp community. So you're entitled to our free ebooks, free classes, and so many other programs that we have for our community members. With that being said, I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye. No way.